Hello, this is H.C. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy XIII! There's no way we can take on that guy, so screw that, I'm out of here. Let's just, uh, go straight up the middle, right through the front gate. Ballsy. I like how they have the glass floor here, a nice little reflective surface. We got two treasures here. You want to be very careful which one you choose. I like getting the particle accelerators, because... If you try going for the other treasure, then this happens. Nuts. Yeah, what happens is that he walks in, he takes the other treasure with him, and you can never get it. If only there were a way that I could get around that and get the other treasure. Well, there is. Let me uh, actually reload my save state for a moment, and uh, I'll be right back to show you how to do that. Take four! Actually, this is my fourth attempt because I'm trying to win a rare item from this guy. I am using the Connoisseur catalog, which I've listed in the video description, how to upgrade to get it, so that way I can have a better chance of winning the rare item. But let's take him down! Now this guy is really, really hard. First things first, use bravery and haste on Saz. You need a little bit of luck to be able to survive because sometimes he'll just go right away and stomp on your entire party. What was that? Boonhilder? What was that? I don't get that. That's no, Brynhilder. I don't know why he pronounced it the way he did. But... Well, I figured I'd show this off. Now, normally, when fighting the Edamantois, you have to take out his two legs first. But for whatever reason, when you summon an Eidolon, it can be anyone, doesn't matter which one it is, uh, it'll just take out the legs instantly, and then he'll just sit there for a while, like about 90 seconds. So, first things first, I want Saz to get... Uh, the three big debuffs on him. If if you don't have all of that, at least get deep attack. All right, there we go. Now we'll switch to Rav Rav Sab. And I like using Thunder to boost the chain bonus just because it has the shortest uh, attack animations. That way we can get, well, we want to boost the chain bonus so we can deal enough damage to this guy. And I'm just switching to the same paradigm, just use ATB refresh there. Now, just so you know, I'm not using instant death or random instant chain, or any shrouds, or, or anything like that. You know, you know uh, all you need are three tech points for your summons. Let the Gestalt meter run out. Don't worry about it. And once Brynhildr goes away, switch to Sin, Com, Sab, so that way I can get Brave and Haste on everyone else, and Fang can get the remaining debuffs that I actually care about. Get those two on Fang. There we go. Switch to Rav Rav Sab. And keep on trying to boost the chain bonus there. There we go. And once we've gotten it up to about 900, as eh, might as well max it out, whatever. Okay, there we go. Switch to Triple Commando. Now the secret to this boss fight is using Saz with Dual Blitz with the Hayati's Mangdoms maxed out on experience. I've listed that in the video description, how to upgrade to get that. Because it has a severe HP handicap for Saz. But I don't care about that because he's sitting on his ass the whole time. And has huge strength for Saz. So, you know, that can be really good for him. It's the only weapon that I think is really capable of uh, winning this battle at this point in the game without instant death. And, uh, yes! Yes! I got the Trapezohedron! I got the Trapezohedron on my fourth try! Woohoo! Alright! That is the catalyst that you need to upgrade any weapon to its tier 3 state. And what I'm going to use it on is Fang's Taming Pole, which I've already maxed out on experience. Listed it in the video description there. So the Taming Pole upgraded to the... Where is it? Oh, there it is. It upgraded to the Venus Gospel. You max it out. You use a Trapezohedron on it. You get the Cane's Lance, which whenever you upgrade a weapon to Tier 3, you get uh, a 6 ATB bar that... Uh, where is it? Well, I can't show it here, but... Uh, well, I guess I'll show it in whatever the next battle is. Okay, never mind. I'll be right back. Okay, we're all set and ready to go. Now, just so you know, winning that Trapezohedron is not that easy. It took me three to four hours to win one my first time. So, don't assume it's going to be easy. It is totally not worth it. I only did this for you viewers, so that way I could show you the six ATB bars just to demonstrate it for you to see the power of all that and everything. So... 
You know, but I'm not going to use it for any storyline battles or anything like that. I'm still going to stick to the Calamity Spear, you know, just, you know, for those who don't want to invest the time in the Tier 3 weapons, and frankly, I don't blame you. So, yeah, now you can get both of those treasure chests while, or at, if you kill the Adamantois there. So let's demonstrate the Kane's Lance here. Why not? Or we can get a preemptive strike. Why not? I'm always so pissed off at getting preemptive strikes. But anyway, you see, uh, well, you kind of saw it briefly here. Fang has six ATB bars now. That's a result of upgrading a weapon to tier three stage. Or yeah, upgraded to tier three. So, okay, maybe that wasn't such a good example of demonstrating it. But like you can use double Ruinga. You can use three uh, buffs from Synergist. It can get ridiculously powerful with that. Okay, let me see if this will be a better example of uh, using all of the uh, ATB bars there. All right, there we go. And I like going after the Celebrant first, because they got those bazookas that can be really damned annoying there. Okay, maybe that wasn't a good example, but well, you get the idea, viewers. So, all right. By the way, when you upgrade a weapon to Tier 3, uh, you cannot synthesize any abilities with it anymore like the ATB boost or something like that. So, just so you know, there, there is a drawback there. So, yeah, now I'm just switching back to my Calamity Spear, because, uh, yeah, Tier 3 weapons are just way overpowered. Actually, they make it very, very hard to uh, five-star a lot of battles. So that's another reason why you shouldn't use it. All right, and after that battle, how do I get in there? Ah, there we go. Yeah, I'll just uh, sneak on through here, if you don't mind. Thanks. By the way, if you want to farm Trapezohedrons to get Tier 3 weapons, uh, this is pretty much the only method that's really viable right now, other than using, like, instant death. The problem is that you just don't have enough HP to survive uh, his uh, Quake and Stomping. You need, like, 14,000 HP. So, yeah, that's just not going to happen. The best way, if you want to do it now, as opposed to waiting until you get the next... Crystarium upgrade, the best way to do it would be to do what I just did and then fight all these little soldiers around here to regenerate your tech points so that way you can summon again. Because that's pretty much the only way you're going to take it down. You just, you just don't have the HP to survive, even with accessories that help you out. And if you use accessories to help you out with that, then you won't have the strength to deal with them. So I wouldn't recommend farming trapezohedrons until post-game, so... Now I'll rearrange my setup and be right back. Okay, we're all set and ready to go. I meant invest my CP as much as I could, not, um, uh, what is it? Not rearrange my setup. This place really secured is dead if you go on. Well, I suppose you answered your own question there. Sorry if I sound a little different than I did a few moments ago in the video, but I, uh, I had to go to work after killing that guy, so, or that Adamantois, so, uh, yeah, so this is a few hours later for me in real time, but anyway, uh, like I was saying, I invested the CP that I got. Uh, I only invested in Sentinel and Medic to simply unlock them for everyone, because I've finished off my primary roles. I've maxed those out. Um, so yeah, there you go. I've learned all the abilities that I care about. I've listed them in the video description. From this point on, I'm really not going to invest CP unless I'm going to go over 999,999, which is the max you can hold on to. There you go. Ooh, look, a pretty bird. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, hey, guys. So how's it going? this is the heart of Cocoon. It's incredible. Oh. Wow, it's, it's an incredible it's bridge. Controlling all of the other Cocoon Falci. It's also where we'll find Orphan, the battery that keeps Eden running. Okay, so you know, for anyone who doesn't know what Orphan play? is, Your it's pretty much play. running the show Charging here. Through the front door, what else? Not like we have much of an hey, other idea. Where are you going? We got the long, narrow hallways what still. <laughs> What's wrong with you? I can't get my voice high enough today for that for some reason. Some days I can. Some what? days my voice just doesn't agree with me. Oh, right. <laughs> okay, more monsters to kill. Hey, hey, all right. We got some backup now. You guys are gonna help us out. I hope that's our backup. Right? Well, if it is, I don't think our backup is happy to see us. <laughs> oh, I suppose not. 
Well, anyway, one of the key abilities that I've learned is poison for lightning and Saz. So, you know what? Let's show it off a little bit. I'm not going to be able to get to the next boss anyway. So I might as well show off how good poison can be for us. Uh, first thing first, let's get slow on this guy. There we go. But yeah, lightning will be able to poison this guy because, well, I don't have the Neil with us. So let's get uh, deep protect, curse, poison if I can. Come on. Come on, then. Get curse on the guy. There we go. Not that I really care about curse, but uh, the more debuffs you have, the better you can chain the guy. So, yeah, I'm going to be able to chain this guy before, theoretically, before I he can get Steam Clean to work. I hope so. Okay, come on. Get something. Go, 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 go. Come on. Stagger him. Yes! Got him. Woo! Launch him into the air. Okay. Well, I was a little behind there, but uh, we made it. We made it. So, all right. Yeah, we're back to uh, five ATV bars now. So, oh, well. Not like he could interrupt me even if he wanted to. All right. Got him. So, yeah. I mean, that's the power of having lightning. It's a really well-developed saboteur. I mean, it's just so easy at this point. So, okay. Well, now I'm going to take care of all these enemies here. And I'll probably meet you somewhere at the end of the hallway there. Because there's a lot of guys to kill here. Nah, I changed my mind. I figured I'll just clear some of the battles out. And then walk all the way over there and talk to you. I was thinking I didn't have anything to talk about. But nah, actually, I have lots to talk about. I always do. But yeah, with these uh, Inquisitrixes there, um, I would use Comrade Sin, actually. Um, Pain only works if there's like a lot of them. I like how a lot of those Inquisitrixes have similar or the same quotes that lightning does from earlier so yeah that's kind of weird i don't know if that's supposed to be a reference or maybe she was one i don't know maybe she was a dominatrix i wouldn't be surprised another squad okay what are they up to oh it's a cavalry there so what's going on oh, see what well, that was fast. Just like that. A friendly reminder, we're running on bomb Now, time. what happened there, because they don't explain it here. It's in the data log. But apparently, the Fal C made them into the C with no focus, which basically stripped them of their souls immediately. That's amazing. I like that. I wish they would have explained that in the story, but still, I think that's pretty cool how they did that. Okay, well, I'm not going to be able to get through all of these battles here, so let me just uh, save here real quick. There we go. But yeah, I was talking about those Inquisitrixes earlier with using pain on them. Like I was saying, that's only... I mean, it, you can use it on them in smaller groups, but you'll probably kill them faster just by going all out after getting protect on everyone anyway. So, but yeah, like I was saying, um, yeah, I'm not going to be able to get through to the boss fight. I'll just meet you at the end there, at the beginning of the next episode. But I might as well show some new enemies here. As long as I got the time. These guys are sacrifices. Probably the best enemy in the game to farm money from. Not here, but eventually. So first things first, you want to use pain and fog on them. Preferably fog, because they have... Uh, they can use instant death on you. And if they use instant death on your leader, they will kill you until you are dead. So now, let's go after the other one. There we go. But yeah, once you get fog on them, if you can get pain, great. But once you get fog on them, that's enough. Then just go all out. And they have resistance to physical attack, so you want to go all out on them. Did I leave for them? Yeah, I left them. But anyway, um, well, you can't see it. But uh, uh, the reason why they're so good for farming money is that their common drop is perfume, which sells really, really well. And their second drop, or their rare drop, are Scarlet Tights, which is good for upgrading things like Power Gloves. But they can also be sold for some good money, too. So, uh, if you got a collector's catalog, you know, equip that, and you can get a lot of perfumes from them. You can get a lot of money from them. So, that's pretty nice. Alright, we got a Scarlet Tite. But can we make peace with Rosh and the people of Cocoon? Find out next time on Let's Play Final Fantasy XIII! This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day.